Lauren booked out in a way, it was a film that almost didn't quite get made, did it? Because it was an unfinished script that you had languishing in your drawers, 30 pages of it. And it wasn't until the lady to my right here, Mirren, came along that it got picked up again. Tell us about what happened with that. Yeah, uh, basically I've been trying to write a lot of different scripts and I kind of had written the first 30 pages of what would become booked out, but with the uh, kind of the rather rubbish title Block of Flats back then, <laughs> which um, I'm not sure an amazing title now, but at least it's better than that. Um, but the, yeah, so basically I'd, I'd written the first 30 pages and it, it's still pretty much as it is in the film, but um, I kind of got to the point where I'd kind of set everyone up and they kind of, and then he, I didn't really know where to take it. And, um, Mary was doing her acting training in New York and she asked me to send over some scripts or whatever. Um, so I basically sent her every, every little thing I had on my computer and she came back and said, what's this block of flat script? And I was like, I'd forgotten all about it. So I went and read it again and I was like, yeah, I, I, kind of, I was ready at that point to finish it all. And I think I was kind of so glad that that happened. And yeah, that's three and a half years ago and now we're here showing you the film is a bit crazy to be honest. So Miriam, let's pick up your part at that at that point. Now you read those 30 pages and obviously as Warren said, got in touch and said, hey, where's the rest of this? Can you get it finished? What was it that really excited you about the picture at that point? I, I really enjoyed um, the characters and I really loved the, the world that they lived in and I was really excited about um, I wanted to inhabit that world and I also just really um, connected to um, the universal emotions that each character um, had and um, I also enjoyed it as laughing out loud and I got lost so um, that's a good thing if you get lost in the world and read a script. And uh, can I come to you now? Now I know that when you auditioned for Booked Out. You had a bit of an interesting audition, didn't you? Both in terms of the piece that you chose and in terms of reception of one of the people who was at the audition. <laughs> the dog. That's yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, the people at the Brian auditioned that day. Uh, man was the only one that had a dog barking the whole way through it. Um, I don't know if that was good or bad, but it somehow helped. Um, and as far as the piece goes, um, I chose a voiceover from Monster, um, Charlize Theron's voiceover. Because um, I felt she was most, um, maybe she inhabited a lot of things that Jacqueline's character did. Um, yes, yeah, so I chose, chose that piece. And it was a voice only, so I couldn't compare me to anybody else doing it, <laughs> which helped. Borlo, how did, you, how did you feel about your character, Jacob? What was it that attracted you to that part? Um, to be honest, you know, I'm trying to make my aunt sound as intelligent as theirs, but I think I'm going to fail massively. Um, <laughs> To be honest, it was just, you know, he's a nice character and not that difficult to play. I mean, these guys have the hard job of, you know, not speaking for an entire film. It's quite tricky to make a good performance. Whereas, you know, my character, let's face it, I got the easy, easy part. But, you know, it was a nice script and a nice bunch of people, so why not? But you had to be kind of interact. You sort of link between the two different worlds, weren't you? Jacqueline's world and Ailey's world as well. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a different thing with, with you know, like with Ailey. I mean, I didn't really have to do a lot there. Because you know she, I was always feeding off her, but and, you know with um, with Claire's stuff, you know it was it was it was a little trickier because there was you know she was playing her deadpan, and, you know. But you know I think we, we got there in the end. Jacqueline's uh, character is quite quiet throughout the film, isn't she? She didn't have a lot of dialogue to work with. So maybe Claire, you could just tell us a bit about what you sort of did to prepare yourself for that role, and also um, the challenges of playing a character that doesn't have a lot of dialogue and has to communicate a lot through silence. As far as the character being mute throughout um, the drive of the film goes, um, it, I was drawn to Jacqueline for that very reason. Um, I think a lot of films are very dialogue heavy and they, they don't give you those moments, those awkward moments to just sit and reflect and to see what's happening um, between the characters. So the fact that she was completely mute really drew me to because I wanted the challenge. Um, as far as preparation goes, I didn't prepare any differently than what I would from a character that has a lot, a lot of dialogue um, in that, that same way, but um, because of her character there was a lot of research. And Mirren, your character of course is so, so different than Jacqueline in the film, Ailey's so, so different. Um, and I know you had some interesting ways that you kind of got under her skin, didn't you? So why don't you tell us about them? Um, 
had a lot of fun um, preparing for Ailey because she's a fun character. I, I did a lot of the behaviour that she did. Um, I went to life drawing art classes and that was fun because I wanted to get the little girl um, part of me um, out of the way so then giggle and be unprofessional during the scene. Although it doesn't really matter because she is having fun with um, Jacob in that scene where she goes and um, takes Jacob to um, some life drawing art class. Um, I'm rambling here. And um, no, um, I also sketched every day and that's when I felt most like Ailey when I, just like a diary, you would write in a diary every single day, I would just sketch. And I'm not an artist, so it was quite fun. And you also did one other thing, didn't you? Well, I'm sure you did many other things, but one other thing that I'm thinking of is that you kind of thought about where she'd live. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. a reveal. <laughs> um, I didn't even do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I specifically chose what house she would live in um, and what streets and went to visit. And probably think, appeared to be like a stalker. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going really method on that one, I like it. Um, Brian, for the people who don't know here, um, you don't have a background in filmmaking and you did something a little bit unusual with this, which is that you're actually a computer programmer, aren't you? Um, and you did something a little bit unusual with this, which is that you didn't make a short film or a commercial or anything like that first. You actually went straight in, dive straight into making a feature film. Why did you decide to do that? and how did you find that experience? Yeah, I think, uh, I guess in some ways it's like a, a good thing that you don't really know what the rules are meant to be because then you don't kind of follow them and you kind of don't, you don't, you don't know how hard it is to make a film up front because you've never done it before so you just think, well, I can, I can do this. And um, I guess specifically for not doing short films, I thought if you want to make a kind of professional short, it's going to take you like a, a year of your time. I thought, well, if I'm going to spend a year of my time on something, I'd rather do a feature film and kind of get the exposure of that. Brian asked something of um, Claire and Mirren with their characters, which was not to talk or interact offset during the production. And I wondered if you two could say a little bit about that and what it meant to you while you were filming, both in terms of getting into character and in terms of any awkwardness that that created. And maybe, Rado, if you could say something as well about what it was like being in the middle, being able to talk to these two, <laughs> two actresses. Yeah, it was really difficult um, because we were on a really small, the location was very small, like the rooms were really small, so we were always within um, close, proximity, pro blah, 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 close proximity to each other. Um, so it was, it was really difficult, but I suppose we just put the the shutters up and we could even be in a car together at the same time and our earphones on our face and we just weren't aware of each other's existence. We just we didn't have any bond or connection with each other. And um, for my character I think it really helped because the first moment when we actually meet on on, on the film is, is actual real. It's real tension, it's really there. Um, so I think that did really help help for that for that second. And how how did you find it, Rollo? Did you find it? I <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it helped them immensely and stuff, but it was pretty, pretty funny when they'd walk past each other and just, I mean, I think, and they would just walk on straight face. It was pretty, it was pretty funny. But, you know, if it works, it works, doesn't it? You know, it all helps. And how about you, Mo? What was it like for you? Um, I just, I think because I was so immersed in Ailey's world and I really um, believed in it that I want, the, Ailey doesn't know who Jacqueline is. She doesn't, she, for most of the film, she doesn't know who she is, so it, it just, based on my instincts, it's, um, it kind of went with my instincts and it was what was needed and I wanted to do the best for Brian's film, so I would, would have done anything, really, within reason. And was that, did it work the way you wanted it to, Brian? Um, I guess, I guess the reason I thought it was a good idea was that, um, like anything you can do to help an actor have the right environment for the character is, is kind of one of the things you can do as a director. And, uh, it's kind of hard to know if, what it would have been like if we we went the total other direction and we kind of met up lots beforehand and they kind of were friendly and then I decided let's do this thing. So it's hard to know what the other one would be, but um, I think I would do similar things like the next film because it, I think it can only add to a performance. I don't think it could necessarily take it away. Um, 
but it was quite interesting. I always find it interesting at lunch times because we'd all go down and have lunch and we kind of sit in a circle in the grass outside the flat and uh, basically whoever was there first would be sitting with the rest of the group and the other one would be sitting on this little kid's play park of their own. So you kind of like, you know, it's like, oh, who's going to get there first today? And yeah, it was, it was yeah, I think I agree with Rollo, it was kind of amusing to watch from, the, from the outside. <laughs> Entertaining during filming for you, yeah, absolutely. Um, I wonder if you could talk a bit about um, the shoot itself and any challenges, apart from the ones we've talked about already, or any happy accidents that each of you found during that process. I don't know who wants to leap in first on that question. Happy accidents. Happy accidents. Well, um, I'd say the, the French, the French, you know, I mentioned this to you earlier, the French one was um, probably a happy accident. Well, happy for me, not so much for them. I was supposed to know my lines perfectly in French um, for that for that French bit with Miss Nichols, and unfortunately, I kind of failed to realise the day that it was happening. So it turned out that I completely failed at speaking French, and though actually it kind of worked out all right in the scene, I thought because you know it kind of looks like I'm meant to be shit French, whereas actually I just was. So that was maybe a good thing. I don't know. I think it's the funniest. There was one scene where like, you're trying to direct the scene and I don't know French either. So like, you were saying the words and I thought it looks good and it kind of sounds good to me. And then the, um, Jordan, who's here tonight, can actually speak French and he was kind of just shaking his head. <laughs> Which I thought that's a good sign. If he's shaking his head, then we must be doing it right. So. <laughs> what about you guys, Claire and um, um Unhappy accident for me, um, the bath scene. Um, they asked me beforehand um, how I wanted the water, whether I wanted it warm or cold, blah blah. And I was like, I really don't want to have to fake a horrible pool cold and for Jack and where she's at that point, it needs to be cold. So I was like, no, no, it's cold, it's fine, that problem. Um, however, when I actually got in the water, it was, it was like the ice had just melted. It was like, it was the coldest thing I've ever felt in my life. And as my toes went in, I knew there was no, I couldn't just get out because it would taken us so long to light the scene and set everything up and costume and everything. There was no backing out of it. Once I'd started, I had to go in there. It was so painful. It was so, so cold. Um, but I think it worked quite well. <laughs> would you do it again or would you rethink that? Um, uh, for Brian, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a good answer. What a diplomat.